October 30th, we're back at 21 Soho with Ian Brody talking about life in and out of the Lightning Seeds and John Higgs on the KLF. Tickets below. Well, welcome to another Word Down Your Way and another musician about to set out on a UK tour and remembering the first gigs and the best gigs that they've ever seen. And uh, it's the fantastic Gary Newman. Gary, lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I just say, I think the last time I saw you was in, in 1981 when you were, you were, you were, you had reappeared. Uh, this is for a cover story of Smash It's, you'd reappeared wearing the kind of Bogart Macintosh and, and the Ho Homburg hat. Yeah. <laughs> what, do, you know, do you know, the reason for that was I knew that I knew I was going to be having hair transplants and it was oh, going right. to be a bit rough for a while. So I, I, I'd come up with an image that meant I could wear a hat for about a year and nobody would think much about it. And that, oh, the nastiness could be going on underneath it. And I would, <laughs> but then, then I went and told everybody I'd had it done. So it was a bit pointless. You did. Me. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it fooled me anyway. Do you, keep, <laughs> do you keep your old costumes? I have to know. Do you do? Uh, do you have um, stuff that you wore in old photo sessions and so forth? I, I, I was really bad at it. I I tend to do something and then move on and forget about uh, it. But my mum did a reasonable job of it, and so I have some of it, but not much to be honest. Uh, I mean, one of the very first things I ever wore on on the top, top of the pops right at the very beginning was this little jacket with the red lapels in it, um, and. Uh, I, I found that in the back of a shed and it had all been ratted, ratty and just destroyed, you know. And I sort of, I regret that now. I wish, because now I've got children. I, don't, I wish I had been more um, um, sort of aware of what I was doing and kept it. My, my wife is great. You know, my, my wife keeps everything now. So since we've been together, which is a long time, there's a much better collection of things. But no, all the early stuff. So have I, you got a warehouse? Where the stuff is going and eventually going <laughs> on to a museum? Some people a lot of people do. do. No, yeah. a lot of people do. I, not, not a warehouse. I do have a little store, a couple of storage rooms in Sussex that I, I keep things there. But that's not just, you know, stage clothes and things like that. That's some old equipment. You know, all, all my old uh, recording tapes, or the two inch tapes and the quarter inch, that they're all stored there. N not in the best conditions, to be fair. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's either freezing or swelteringly hot, but that's where they are. Yeah. So, so you live in Los Angeles now, but we mm. we we uh, reach you in Scotland. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, we we bought a house in Scotland, not too far from Edinburgh and Glasgow, um, about a year and a half ago. What, what happened was during the pandemic, but when I was coming here, we was having to isolate. So we would, you know, rent a house, spend a few weeks there until your your isolation was finished, and just just saw a, a potential there <laughs> for it as a, as a little extra business. And so I've always wanted to have um, a big country house, and, and never never did it. And so we just started to think about it and, and looked around. And in Scotland, you can get some extraordinary places, you know, for, for quite reasonable money. And so we, we spent about, oh, I don't know, probably a year and a half or so actually looking for it until we found it. Uh, and we bought this place, which is, um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool, actually. It's, <laughs> it's got its own river. It's got about 12 acres of land. and It's got its own river, but you were saying earlier, I think you don't, you don't let people fish on it because your wife's no, very, yeah. very pro-nature. Yeah. Uh, well, pro well, I, <laughs> I, I am a bit, but she's really, really hard on it. You know, but I'm, I'm not vegetarian. She, you know, she's hardcore. Yeah. Vegetarian. But no, it has a river. Uh, we own up to the middle of the river with their boundaries. So it's, I don't know, three or 100 yards of river or something. Um, on that end of it, uh, and there is salmon and a brown trout, I think they call mm, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, another fish. <laughs> and, and they're, <laughs> they're in there. And I found out the other day that people would pay like a thousand pounds a day. So now I'm thinking, yeah, I, I'm going to talk to her about it because maybe we can find middle ground. The middle ground. The, the controversy <laughs> there is the people are paying a thousand pounds a day, but they're not catching anything, and then they get, well, they go in quite a bad mood. Not my problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are many fish. There are very few fish. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, no, that's never going to happen. She, she, I, that would be an instant divorce if I tried to argue about having fishermen here, but. It's just it's just very pretty, and and the thing I love about it, it it's um, not that we'll ever spend that much time here when it's up and running, but it's it's so tranquil, and the the, the pace of life here is entirely different to what I'm mm. used to, and it's really pleasant. You know, you you come here and, and all your worries and 
the, you know, the pace of life just sort of evaporates and it yeah. is very very seductive you know i really look forward to coming here so i'm sort of dreading in a way when, when we start yeah. renting it because we'll probably never come well very yeah. rarely come back after that yeah oh, oh well so we, the, the idea is we want to talk a little bit about your uh, your experience of live music, either watching it or playing it and so forth, and we're talking about your upcoming tour. Can you remember when you, who was the first act you ever saw live? Can you remember? Yeah, yeah. I went to see I went to see a band called Nazareth, although they wasn't Oh, the yeah. Oh, right. This is in... I, Dan I, McCafferty and Manny Charlton. Yeah. <laughs> they'd, done, they'd done that single called is it This Flight Tonight. Yes, Johnny Wayne, Mitchell Wayne song. McGuin. And I really like that that song, that version, their version yeah. of it. But that was all I knew about them. So I went, I went to see them at the Rainbow in Fringley oh, Park. Right. And but the band like that was supporting them were called Silverhead. Yes. Uh, so that's oh, what Michael Desbars. Yes. Yeah, Mike, Michael Desbars, who I thought was amazing. I, I, he had like double jointed elbows, as I remember. And um, and <laughs> the bass, the bass player in Silverhead ended up being the bass player in Blondie. Yes, you many, did. many many years later. Oh, but that was that, that Nigel was Harrison. Yeah. It's all coming back. That's, to yeah, me. Nigel Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had an album out called Sixteen and Savage, which I went out and bought the next day. And I just just became a massive Silverhead fan. With but a then, very controversial cover that had that that record. Yeah, the, the woman in the, the young girl in the mirror with her. <laughs> yes, dear, oh dear. So yeah, so that was your first gig was to go to that and yeah uh, yeah. So was that? Do you remember being kind of overawed by just the noise and the the scale of it, or had you had any experience of that kind of thing at all? Well, well not really, but uh, and it was very impressive. There was one weird thing happened during, during the Nazareth gig. Uh, it's the only time it's ever happened to me, and it, it it was really weird. There was one particular song, and in the chorus part of it, the guitar player would hit this note, and it would feed back. And it must have been some kind of resonant frequency for me because I just went down like a sack of potatoes. And it had three choruses, three times. He would go into his chorus, hit this note, whoa, boom, down all went as if I'd been... What, you hit the deck? I mean, yeah, completely down onto the floor. Everything right. stopped Everything stopped working. So that freaked me out a little bit. I thought, oh, what if this happens every was time? Say, was that a pleasurable experience? <laughs> no, no, not at all. And I'm looking, I sort of get up and I'm looking around thinking, what? Yeah, what was that? Um, and, but nobody else had fallen down, so I couldn't couldn't figure out what it was. I've never known for sure, but I've always assumed it was that particular frequency because it was, you know, it did the same thing every time and it happened every time. Only on that one song, only on that one chorus. So that was a pretty weird kind of it's introduction. It's a strange baptism by fire. Yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. Who else did you see around that time? You're, you're a big, um, uh, was it Queen? Were you a big Queen fan, I think, when you? Yeah, I went to see. Did I you ever see them? Yeah, I did. I went to see Queen at the same venue. Actually, in fact, I, I saw Queen when they were supporting somebody. Oh my gosh! Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, I went to see Queen. I went to see Queen lots of times. I went to see them at the Rainbow. The, the first time I saw Queen at the Rainbow, uh, well, they so supported Mott the Hoople, I think. But that I must know. be. That well, must no, be no, it. Just no, 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 no. Yeah. I think that's probably it. I think so. I went to see Mott the Hoople as well. But I went. I went to see Queen when I was at the Rainbow. So I think they were headlining by then. And um, Seven Seas of Ride come out and mm. they were massive. Uh, and I've been to the Rainbow a few times by then. And we always used to hang about with the stage door. You know, if the pop stars would come out and they'd run through the crowd and not talk to anybody and get in their limousines and disappear. And that's what I was expecting with Queen. Um, but that's not what happened. It was a small group of them, a reasonable group of us actually, with the stage door. And somebody came out and got everybody. And we were all invited in, we're all into the dressing room where they're all there. And and everyone signing autographs and being really lovely and just chatting to everybody. And I uh, I only had a five pound note. I wasn't expecting that. I was for my train fare to get home again. And so they signed my five pound note. So it's uh, everywhere. All all all. So you had to walk home. No, I had to use it to buy my bloody ticket. <laughs> so somewhere, <laughs> somewhere out there is a, is a five pound note with Queen's genuine Queen autographs on it. What if it's still out there? <laughs> That's plus. What was, a decision. Yeah. That's yeah, it was, it was it was a hard one, but I was just I was just totally blown away. Well, how different they were to all the other bands I've been to. Yeah, see. They, they had time for the fans. You know, they've just done this really big gig, which for them at the time was you know this big big London gig, and yet rather than rushing off and having parties or going off your groupies, whatever you do, they were taking time to bring fans in and talk to them, and, and I just thought that was lovely, and it's a really important lesson. And policy never, you adopted, presumably. Well, up to a point, 
Yeah. But that that thing about taking care of fans and giving time to them before you go and do whatever it is you're going to do, I, I was an important lesson. And I did remember, yeah. So when was the first time you stood on the stage yourself? Well, well little ones, you know, when I was 15, 16, because I was in local pub bands, you're doing weddings and all cover versions, you know, tie Yellow Ribbon and... No, really? What, what did you play? Yeah. It's interesting. What, what, uh, what, was the set, what sort of set list? Uh, I can't remember now. Um, it was well, Ty Yellow Ribbon always comes to yeah. mind, but I, I hated it so much. Um, but loads of Rolling Stones songs, loads of Beatles songs. I, I just I just joined somebody else's band that was established as a rhythm guitar player. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I had a really, my mum and dad had got me a really nice guitar when, when I was a kid, so I was very, very lucky. And I think that got me into most of the bands rather than my playing. I, I wasn't a very good player. I've never been a very good player, actually. <laughs> not then, not now, really. So the, the, this tour you've got coming up between now and Christmas is is a bit of a departure, isn't it? Tell us about mm-hmm. this. Well, well, again, during the lockdown, um, we I met up with the band at one point in one of the houses that we were renting when, once we'd done through the isolation bit. And the idea was to record some songs acoustically, which I'd never done before. And then I was going to make little films of each one of them where, where I'd be talking about the song and what it was about. Because, again, I don't talk much. When, I, when I'm on stage, normally I don't talk at all. You know, just say hello and thank you. Good night. Um, so I just thought that would be an interesting thing to do. I'd make up these little films, put them out to the fans for, for free. And you know, everyone during lockdown, we, we're all trying to do different little things, weren't we? Just stay in touch and you know, yeah. keep people engaged and so on. So that was the idea. So we sat down for a few days and, and worked on about 13 songs, I think. And I realised at that point that the songs actually could work acoustically. And I never thought they could before. You know, I was expecting to go to this house with the band, struggle for a few days and just think, mm, you know, that's yeah. really not a good idea. We'll forget that and not say anything about it. But it was surprisingly, it was good fun, for one thing. The, the band really enjoyed it. And it was interesting to take very heavy electronic songs, you know, with lots of you know loop grooves in the background, and yeah, just big, big sounding songs, and do them on an acoustic guitar and a and a double bass. You know, how's that going to sound? And it was surprisingly interesting. I, I think maybe because my stuff is very, um, it's kind of melody first, yeah, and then all of that stuff comes comes later. You underneath, you strip all that away, you still got tunes. You know, right. things that you can sing along to and, re- and remember, hopefully. So I think that's probably why it worked. But, it, you know, it was a pleasant surprise to me. And that's where the the germ of the idea that maybe we could do this on a slightly bigger scale um, sort of started to come to mind. But but th- this tour we do is still very much an experiment. You know, it's a fairly short tour, fairly small little places. And and you're playing quite a few churches, aren't you? And I think one cathedral. Is that right? I mean, that's, that's yeah. a wonderful idea. Well, I'm 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 hardcore atheist, so <laughs> yeah, the, the they don't mind. The, they don't mind. They'll have anybody. <laughs> is that is that a part of the idea of the acoustic as well? I mean, is it, why are you doing that? It's a lovely idea. I well, I didn't sort of go out of my way to choose churches, but we did want venues that were intimate and ornate, often you know, you know where where possible and had their own kind of architectural charm to them. Yeah. And that does yeah. lend itself to churches and chapels and that, that kind of thing. What One of them wanted me to say, this is about three or four months ago, wanted me to send them all of the lyrics of the songs oh, I'm going oh, to Oh, really? Oh, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Because there's so much of it is not happy about God. And, yeah. You know, and no, it's not full of swearing and that mm-hmm. sort of nonsense, but I'm pretty, you know, firm in my views that what was their reaction did they let you come and play well, there or well, i just i can't well i couldn't actually anyway you know we're we're rehearsing now i still don't know what songs i'm going to do you know we're still trying so we will be later today still trying songs finding out which ones work best which ones don't so i don't know I, you know and you're going to change the set every night you're going to be doing some amount of changes every single night so i couldn't possibly even know to be honest what i was going to be doing in in Hackney or wherever it was, right. you know. So it was it was a bit of a nonsense question anyway. But you know, I, I would have been quite worried about sending the lyrics. I, I was I was just worried that if they see a load of you know of heavy sort of atheist message coming on, and they would just say, "Oh no, you know, I don't think we'll have you after all." 
and uh, <laughs> we were kind of established by then. You know, I've sold meet and greets for it. And so it <laughs> right. <laughs> But I suppose the great thing about churches is is that they bring the, the, the natural drama about those environments, isn't it? I mean, they yeah. just yeah. I think it lends itself to to, to doing something acoustically, uh, and and the whole way we're going about it is very very different. You know, normally there'd be a really big light show and a video wall, and you know everything's kicking off and all standing up and doing your thing and strutting about. We're not. It's nothing like that this time. We're all sitting down. You know, slight. Sort of curve uh, the mood. The lighting is all very much mood and atmospheric rather than dynamic. We're trying to use the architecture of the buildings as much as possible by lighting them. If there's columns, you know, putting lights all down the hall, so it should look really pretty. But it will be very, very different to what I've done before. So I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. But I, I, I don't know how to go about it. You know, I've never done mm. that sort of show before. So, so. What what do you do? I'm I'm so comfortable doing what I normally do because I've been doing it forever. You know, done over yeah. a thousand shows now. You know, to be, to do a show where I'm sitting down and, and where the vocal is root. I mean, I've never thought of myself as a singer. I, I'm a terrible singer. You know, t- talk about how bad I am all the time. It's it's really going to be exposed now. You know, sometimes it's just a, just a drum and me. I'm really worried about that. No way to hide. <laughs> who have no you learned hide. from over the years? I mean, who have you watched in, in terms of, you know, stage performance and and, uh, and borrowed from their repertoire or whatever or been inspired by? Well, lots of people, really. I still am. You know, you're always looking and you're always seeing yeah. people that could do a really good job of things. Always. You know, so when I was very young, uh, well, I mean, really little, I was, I was into the monkeys. All right. Can't honestly say I learned anything from that. It was just fun, um, and then it was Mark Bolan. And again, did you ever see Bolan? Say. No, big regret though. Big regret. He, yeah. he, he died, I think, not long before I became successful. So I, I didn't have a chance to really. Um, but no, I would love to actually because he was a probably even more than David Bowie. He was probably the the pivotal person for me when I was wanting to get into music. But you saw Bowie, presumably? Yes, yes, saw him a few times. Where was it? What, 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 what do you remember about that? Well, I saw Bowie, uh, the, the most interesting time for me, what I saw Bowie was when he did Wembley. I think it was uh, Station to Station when he did that thin white juke tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had one of those little green glow sticks. Yes. You know, it was, was all the rage a long time ago. Um, and he was doing Gene Genie. I know, and I'd already, well, we got in the paper. <laughs> we were in, me and my friends, we were a big gang of us up in the, the sort of, if you look out from the stage off to the right, the next level up at Wembley, the arena, um, we were all in there. But we didn't like being up there. We wanted to get down the front. And we were, we knew there was only one little, one, one of those little old commissar people. <laughs> That's the only security there was between us and our, yes. us going over the yeah, edge. Yeah. So we thought, well, we can... So we go, can, sit down, lads. That's right. Yeah. So we, we can just bowl him gently out the way, which we did, and went straight over the edge, hung off the side and dropped down onto the floor. And then because everybody was standing up, you could just run along the back of the chairs. No one was sitting on them. Oh, along sure. the back of the chairs, into the front. It got right down to the front. Um, uh, so I'm down with, with all my friends. We're down at the front, uh, you, know, you know, fighting for your space with my glow stick. And I threw it at Bowie, and I mean, it hit him. Just here, yeah. and I know you shouldn't do that now because you know, I've been hit in the face, and it's not funny. So I probably really annoyed him, but it hit him, and he bent down and picked it up, and he was singing "Gene Genie" to my green glow stick. There you go. Best night ever. That's Best night fantastic. ever. <laughs> right. That's a brilliant story. I'm interested in this bit where you say that you, you only say hello and good night. Yeah, now you're clear. Yeah. You're clearly a very kind of sociable, chatty person. Oh, Why do you on, do that? Not on stage, I'm not. Um, well, I swear too much, actually. As soon as I start talking, I start, I'm start. i pretty trying hard not to do it. You know? <laughs> but it wouldn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, you never know. Some people don't like it. But I swear like a trooper. And so I every time I talk on stage, I, I, I start swearing, and it just makes me sound like an idiot. I, I think people that swear a lot sound really thick and really, right. really stupid. I, I write beautifully i write as if i'm really clever <laughs> i'm very eloquent when i write because i've got time to think about it but when i'm talking i'm yeah 
But you could, you could, I mean, you could suddenly just go into a little riff about how a song came about or whatever. Yeah. Or would that would that just change the whole dynamic? Yeah, of what you're trying cha- to do? It changes the mood a bit. I like, yeah. I like a, I like a show to be relentless. The, the acoustic is not going to be like this. But if I'm yeah. doing a normal gig, as one song finishes, I like the next one to be well underway before the crowd has stopped clapping for the first one. So it's just an absolute yeah. onslaught, and it never stops. I think and that's very good. Energy, you know? It's a really yeah. good point. That is. Yeah, it is. It's a really good point. And I, just, yeah, I used to go. This is you're going back to what it was first talking about. You, when you first start going to to see bands, if if that's what you want to do, you know, you're learning. You're not necessarily just watching and enjoying the moment you're learning all the time you're watching what do they do do they talk a lot between songs do how do they handle the crowd and if, if the crowd on this side is more active than the crowd on that side do they focus on the safe side or do they try to get the other side up you know how do they handle the crowd what do they say you know what i was looking at the lighting how what colors do i like what colors do i not like what angles work what angles don't it's backlighting do you know what I mean? You, you, it was like every time I went to a gig, it was like going to school. So when I ever, if I ever got my chance, I would know what I wanted and I would be able to just nail it straight, straight out of the box. And so that's what it was like for me. So now I, I, I still have that same kind of format, if you like. I, I know what I like and I know what works for me. And that's what I want to do, which is why this acoustic thing has just thrown me throwing me sideways a little bit because none of that's going to apply anymore. So now I'm thinking maybe I should talk between songs and it, you know, because it's a more gentle, relaxed, yeah. intimate kind of thing. Maybe I should now. So I've been making notes during rehearsals, trying to remember what the songs are about. You know, oh, I remember this one. You know, this is, but some of my songs are about some pretty unsavory things. I'm not sure I'd, it, it would be good conversations. <laughs> yeah, during, during the church. Oh, this song's about church, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't, there's some things I'd best, best not talk about, but I, you know, I, I probably should, I suppose. And I think that will add to the, to the, the different vibe that it's going to have. You know, the fact that I'm suddenly now talking during the songs, you know, could probably add something to it that the fans would appreciate because I, I don't do it at, at any other time. So, so you, you're just trying this in a short tour in, in between now and Christmas. And yeah. What are you going to be doing beyond that? What's your next plan? Uh, well, a new album. I'm really late with that already. I should be well underway with that now. I haven't done a thing, so I'm a bit worried about that. I've got a deadline. My, I, my deadline to get that ready was the beginning of April, but I'm going out on tour with Ministry again and Frontline Assembly in, in end of February all through March and into April, which effectively means my, my deadline is the middle of February before we start rehearsing. That's just not going to happen. No, you know? it's not, is it? <laughs> I've, I've not written one song yet. I'm not going to be finished by February. I haven't done my homework, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an so, so, uh, so uh, between now and the middle of February, it would be writing and recording a new record as as hard as I possibly can to get as much done as possible. But then I'll be on tour uh, until early April. I, t- I toured with Ministry, oh, it was this year, uh, earlier this year, actually, uh, around America. That, that was amazing. Really, really good fun. One of the best tours I've ever done. Loved it. Just a really lovely atmosphere. You know, all the, the Ministry, I, I, I sort of know them from a while anyway all, all our especially our Jurgensen especially um, and you know when people have been doing it a long time and they're just really good at what they do and they've been all through the, the, the bullshit ego side of it and now they just love what they're doing it was like that and we were all like that there were the three bands all of us have been doing it for a while all kind of admirers of each other and it was just a really really lovely atmosphere Everyone hanging out together all the time. Everyone watching each other's sets every night. Absolutely brilliant. That's the, I mean, that's the way touring should be. And I loved it so much. At the end of it, they said, you know, do you fancy doing another one? And I said, yes, before we talked about anything. Said, oh, yeah, I'm up for it. It's just really good. Because, you know, if you're going to spend a lot of your life on buses touring around the world, you want to be doing it with people that make it fun. It shouldn't be stressful. You know, most most people, I think, when they're kids – they dream about being in a band and they, they dream about that sort of lifestyle. And and then after people that get there and do it, then start moaning about it. Oh, you know, it's so stressful. And, you know, oh, I don't like living on a bus or miss my home. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. It's the best thing you can do. 
you know, it's the best kind of life that you can have. That's, that's classic rock star behavior, though, isn't it? Desperate for, for attention when they're on the way up. And then I need to be alone. You know? oh, it's pathetic. It winds me up. It winds me up. You, 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 I, my, 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 um, my eldest um, kid, Raven, she's just about to, to, to sign to BMG. Uh, and, I, and I'm trying to, and the younger one, the, the middle one, is going into music as well, not, not the younger one. I'm trying to sort of instill into them, you know, the, the the things that you perhaps take for granted are the things that you should be most appreciative of. You know, to be able to to have the the option to to get on one of these big buses and tour around the world or fly around the world and just sing songs to people that love you. You know, what a what an amazing thing to be able to to mm. do that. You know, that is an honour. You know, and we should appreciate that. But more than that, just you know, when I wake up in the morning. Except for this morning, because I had to do this. When I wake up in the morning, I can pretty much do what I want. You know, I can look out the window, and if it's a sunny day, I can think, oh, I just need you know, to go to the beach. I don't know, I have to work. You know, I mean, not because of money, because I've got that freedom to work when I choose to, rather than w- w- because I have to, because somebody's looking at their watch and clocking me in. And that is, that, that is a privilege, man. I think so many people that do what I do for a living don't recognise, mm. you know, that the freedom that our life has. And, you know, and there are times when you're locked into things, you know, touring, obviously, you're, you're, you're locked into that as a commitment. But generally speaking, you, when I choose when I tour, I choose where I go. Do you, do you know what I mean? That, that the, the freedom that we have to, to choose the life that we want is incredible. And I'm very, very, very much aware of that and appreciate it very much. And I want my kids to, if, you know, if they get to that position, to appreciate the same thing. I, I don't want them to become one of these Oh, it's all too much for me, sort of, sort of people, because <laughs> I hate that. I hate it. Gary, it's been really good talking to you. Um, oh, thank you. Thank and uh, as we traditionally say on these occasions, good luck with the tour. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.